everyone, this is Grace of GB Maltese, and I have a <clears throat> little unboxing or unbagging to do of some new diamond pins that I purchased. And I bought these from Diamond Painting by Donnie. Well, it was in there, and now it decided not to show up. But I'm going to, I will link her uh, Etsy store down <clears throat> under the video. But she has some really cool diamond painting pins that she makes. She has also has a YouTube channel. If you haven't checked her out, I'll link her channel below. Go check her out. She's got some great um, diamond painting videos. Very sweet, kind lady. And with the cutest daughter, Teslin. So, go check her out if you haven't already. Anyway, she put this out to me very quickly. And I wanted to do a diamond paint with me, a drill with me, with my new pens. But I thought, oh my goodness, look how pretty they're wrapped. Gorgeous. At that it says handmade. Hey, you don't want to focus, do you? No. Anyway, it says handmade with love. Thank you, especially for you. Gorgeous blue, one of my favorite colors. And look at the pretty sparkly silver. That's gorgeous, Donnie. So pretty. Not nice presentation. So, I had ordered four pins. Let's have my scissors right here. I hate to, I hate to cut the pretty tape. Let me see if I can do it right here. Cut it without taking that off. Not sure if that's going to work or not, but maybe. Ah, yes, there it goes. Such pretty wrapping, like Christmas. Okay, let's see. She's got them to wrap very nicely. Nothing's going to get to these pins, I guarantee. Including me. <laughs> let's see. Let's cut this open. So I can slide them out. Okay. Here's one. I have a Yorkie Poo, so I had to get one with the poodle on it. Mine is solid, my poodle is solid black, but it looks so much like them. And some of you have seen my bogey, so here's this pen. Feels very nice in the hand. Lovely. Then the next one is this. It's got little paisley flowers on it fits nicely I wanted something that would be like a pen just like I was writing because that would I think feel very nice to hold let's open the other one let's see if I can do the same thing she has I couldn't tell you how many different kinds of pens on in her shop and very, very reasonably priced, I tell you. I think, let me see. I don't know the prices on here. I believe they were like $6.50. Something like that. Very, very reasonably priced for these. Okay, let's see. Let me get this one out. Oh, yeah. This one's got that little bit thicker. Look at that gorgeous. You can see the little diamonds in the top. So pretty. I couldn't resist this. So this has got a nice thing to hold. <clears throat> so you're not, you know, getting cramped up. And I got another one just like it in blue. Because I have to have my blue. Love my blues. But that pink is gorgeous. Love hot pink. Isn't that pretty together? Anyway, I think I'm going to try these out today with some painting. 
Donnie, thank you so much. You did a fantastic job on these. I love them. Absolutely love them. And the packaging, hey, that gets an A+. Plus. Two thumbs up there. So I'm going to, let's start with the blue. And I'm going to fill it up with some wax. What I have done is half of this is diamond dot and half of this is just the wax that I got from some of my paintings because it was getting kind of low. And I have a lot of people ask me what do I like to use to diamond paint with. And I normally just use this wax. I have tried the blue Tic Tac. I've done the white. I have a pickup pen. But I seem to always go back to the wax. And the reason is, is it doesn't, I don't think on the top of the drills it doesn't leave quite a, as much of a sticky residue. At least that's my opinion. I could be all washed up. That's how I feel. And yes, you're going to recognize this because, as I said, it seems like I'm only getting around to doing this when I'm with you. So, I've got to move my things into the other room so I'll work on it more. It's been so cold, I don't come in my craft room as much. I have a space heater on. It's a little cooler in this room. But, let me get my light turned on. And I will do a little bit of chatting. Those of you who have been watching me for a while and have heard me talk about my brother, Daryl, who has been fighting cancer. This is his third bout. I have some wonderful news. I am just so excited to share this with you. He has been through radiation for six weeks. He had a lot of spots because he's been through lymphoma and skin cancer twice. This is skin cancer again this time. It was really bad and deep. They checked and all of the places had just one that hadn't gone away, but they did a PET scan. They had noticed that the last time they did a PET scan, he had some places that lit up on his abdomen and I think in the lungs and other areas. When they did this PET scan last week, it was completely clear. Not one thing lit up. And I want to thank all of you. And my brother asked me to thank all of you who have been sending your thoughts and your prayers for him. Thank you so much. He still has one place on his neck. And it's getting smaller. Not sure if they're going to have to do surgery. But thank you so much for your prayers. It's a miracle. Even the doctor could not believe it. So thank you so much. That is the best news that I could even imagine for. So I just want to share that with you right off. Just wonderful news. It's always good to have good news, isn't it? Well, I think I'm going to use this color to start out with today. This is the A. I haven't used this color. So... Sometimes I like to mix it up a little bit and do something a little different. But, such good news and I'm so happy to share that with you. I've had so many of you who've been asking and praying for him and sending your thoughts to him. That you're thinking about him. Thank you so much. It, it works. <laughs> Miracles still happen. I don't care what anybody says. So, let me get started with my pen. Okay, we're going to do A. That ah, works beautifully. Of course, just like I knew it would. And it's very easy to use. Love it. So, I just put some... I'm not sure if you can see the... Yeah, the pink in there for the wax. But last time I video, or did a drill with me, I had someone tell me they'd like to know how my husband and I met, and about our wedding and our honeymoon, so I'll talk about that today. In some ways, it's, it's kind of funny. We basically met in high school. I was just friends with him, and he was so funny. He used to make me laugh. He, he'd make everybody laugh. He was one of those that was a little jokester, you know, 
when I taught school. I had some of those jokesters in my class. He would do things that were just funny. And um, he made me laugh. But I always thought of him as a friend. And someone had said something to me one time, would you ever date him? And uh, my husband's name is Jerry. Would you ever date Jerry? And I said, no. I said, he's just a friend. So I don't, I don't care about dating him. Well, <laughs> wash my mouth out. <laughs> because I did um, start, uh, I went with him to his sports banquet. He was played baseball in high school. And he was the district champ, and he invited me to the sports banquet. So I went to the sports banquet with him. And, well, we've been together ever since. But it was a long time before we ever got around to getting married. We went to college together. I went to be a teacher. He actually got a scholarship to go play baseball at a different school that I was going to. He gave his scholarship up to be to go to school with me. Now, I guess I guess he really does love me. But he wanted to be at school with me and he he got a business degree and I got mine in teaching. So, we were together all through college, then I w moved to the Houston area with my sister and we roomed together and my husband decided he wasn't going to use his business degree. He he works on cars. He is the most outstanding mechanic. He is so good with his hands. When he was a kid he used to take toys apart and put them back together because he liked to see how they worked. He's one of these people you cannot put him in an office and him be happy. So anyway he's went to Livingston, I went to the Houston area, and I taught there. And my sister, in the meantime, she had met someone, and her boyfriend at the time decided to get engaged with her. Well, this, this was the funny part. Jerry is a little bit slow. We had been dating about four years at the time, okay? <laughs> All the, you know, college, all the way through college, we dated. Um, but then in my last, I guess, no, it was, I did, we didn't get engaged in college. It was when I started working, my sister's boyfriend said to my parents and said he, you know, would like to get engaged with my sister. Well, my sister's 14 months younger than I am. And my mom says, well, you know, Grace is a little older. Don't you think she should get married first? And my sister said, I don't care what Grace does, but I'm getting married. Well, my mom and dad were retired at the time. My dad was a retired CPA. But they had a rock and gym shop. So they went to the um, Dallas Market huge place where they have everything there and they sell diamonds and precious gemstones and things like that there anyway um, my mom was going to go pick a, uh, a diamond <coughs> to be mounted for my sister and she went ahead and asked Jerry he said Jerry wouldn't you like for us to go pick up a, a diamond so you and Grace can get engaged he said, well, yeah, okay. So, basically, my mom pushed that one on in there. <laughs> so, anyway, we got engaged, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to plan the wedding. So, uh, that's the way that worked. <laughs> and to this day, I still give him a hard time about that. I'm like, you never asked me to marry you, you know. And he says, well, you know, we were always planning on getting married. And I'm like, really? No, I didn't know. She never asked me. Oh my goodness, I got so upset. I just knocked all my, all my diamonds off into my <laughs> Oh my goodness, I guess I'm still upset about that. Any of you have a, a man that did that to you? Just a little bit behind on getting that planned? 
anyway, we finally did. I planned planned our wedding, and we got married. We had been dating and engaged for five years. As of now, we have been married 36 and a half years, but we've actually been together for 41 and a half years. So I've been with him most of my life. And I love him to pieces. He's just a little... I, I don't know if he was afraid that I would say I didn't want to marry him. I don't know what his deal, his deal was. But anyway, thanks to my mom. My mom is no longer living, but I still have her to thank that we finally got married. She uh, kind of helped me out there. So we got engaged. We, I was teaching in Houston at the time. So we waited. I, I planned my wedding to be in Livingston. Because that's the church I had. We got married at the church I'd been going to for um, a long time. So we did our vows. And we went to, actually we went to Colorado on our honeymoon. And we just drove. Because we were going to stay in ho different hotels on the way. And it was it was a lovely trip. It was wonderful. Um, back then, there weren't quite as many people heading in that direction. So, we got to see a lot. The worst part was we got to an area of Colorado called Silverton and Uray. Well, that those are very small little towns and if you live in Colorado you may know what I'm talking about. Back then they had jeeps that you could rent and they had jeep trails. Okay, These jeep trails were up in the mountains and the roads were dirt. I kid you not, they were dirt and you went straight up round and round this mountain that I don't know maybe was two miles or three miles up to the top so you're going round and round the road is very narrow and if you meet someone coming from the other direction they had these little cutout spaces well you had to back up and get into that cutout space to let that person go by so if they were coming to the direction and you had the cutout because you're on that side you had to move over and yes there were some other people doing the same thing we were I was terrifying the whole way up. Then we finally got to a town on the other end, and I was so happy. And we found a restaurant, and it was so nice and um, cozy little restaurant. And I was just enjoying myself so much. And my husband decided he got the, to get the map out and look to you know map our way back because we didn't, weren't planning on going back the same way because. God forbid we had to go back through that, those jeep trails. Well, he got to looking at that map, and you know what? He said, you know, it's a long ways around on the regular road. I think we're going to take the jeep trails back. Well, let me tell you, that actually really scared the poop out of me. Yes, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> was, yeah, I was not happy. I was terrified, you know? We were young. <laughs> we we're still young. And I'm, all I could think of, we're going to be found. And there will be nothing left of us. Because if you go off the side of that mountain, there is going to be nothing left. You fall two or three miles. So I was completely horrified that we had to go back down. So that part of the honeymoon, I could have skipped very, very easily. <laughs> But we made it. Oh, well, I guess you know that we made it because I'm talking to you today. But we had a wonderful time. Colorado is beautiful. Um, we went in August, but there was still snow up in the mountains. So it was nice and cool. Texas, it is uh, hot. We run in the upper 90s and in the hundreds during the summertime so it was very pleasant 
and we went and saw so many different things and we did a lot of different things and of course we were all lovey-dovey and had a wonderful time we we went onto some off the beaten paths that were pretty but not on a jeep trail and we had rented that jeep and it was a standard it wasn't an automatic so he's you know doing the shifting to go up and down and not, and I do, did not know at that time how to drive a standard so if something had happened to him I guess we'd just be praying that someone would come get us because back in those days there were no cell phones yeah can you imagine that some of you can because you lived during that period of time so yeah it was very it was nice I enjoyed the the honeymoon oh I forgot to talk about the wedding didn't I <clears throat> well the wedding was very simple um, back in the days when we got married people didn't have these huge weddings like they do today like my daughter had a destination wedding and it was expensive and it, it, it was just we won't go there but we just got married at the church had some friends and family that were there and we just had some refreshments. I had this, this beautiful cake. It was a three-tiered cake. And it had a, a fountain underneath it. So, to me, it was just, it was wonderful. And, um, it was just a simple ceremony. So, the, the wedding was, I just remember when I was walking down the aisle next to my daddy. I could tell my daddy looked terrified walking me down. I could see Jerry's face, and the look on his face was pure love and affection, and I could tell he really liked the way I looked. <laughs> yeah, when we got alone, it was, <laughs> well, all of you know <clears throat> that look and what comes with it. Anyway, we had a wonderful time. Um, the wedding was nice. It actually rained on our wedding day, and um, I had always heard that if it rained on your wedding day, that you would have showers of blessings, and I must say that we have. We've had a wonderful life together. Um, well, still are. My daughter, um, we had one daughter, and I just love her so much. She's wonderful. She's grown and married. As I mentioned about her wedding, that was a that was a big production. But mine, very simple, easy wedding, um, and it, it was nice. I did have a lady who was my kind of like a planner, but there wasn't a whole lot to plan. It was just just a nice, you know, back in the days where things were a lot easier, and um, you didn't, I guess. I feel like you had to outdo everybody. I don't know. I don't know. But, it, yes, this is the wedding that uh, my mama helped me push to get married. I mean, she had known Jerry for so long. It didn't bother her to say something to him. He just was a... Uh, I don't know. I, not too long ago, I asked him about that again. I said, why did you not, even, you know, ask me? And this is what he told me, and after all these years, and this hadn't been very long, maybe two, three months ago, he told me this. He said, well, he said, you came from a family that, you know, had quite a bit. Of course, my dad, he was very frugal with everything, but we were never lacking for anything. And his family was, was different, and he just felt like he was not, wouldn't be able to provide for me and make me happy. I could not believe it when he told me that. I said, I have been so happy, and we have everything we want or need. So, I don't know if he just decided to tell me that or if he's just making it up. <laughs> so, I'd stop saying something about, well, you know, you never asked me to marry you. You hear all of these people talking about, oh, how they got proposed to and how wonderful it was. And, and I say, well... <laughs> I wouldn't know. I never got proposed to. <laughs> and my husband, I said, oh, don't bring that up. <laughs> I just, yeah. 
so I don't know. It was kind of strange. Any of you have any stories like that? Where you got to, uh, had to get somebody to help push your man a little bit? It was like, I guess he was just happy the way things were, you know? Um, but I did. I moved to Livingston and started teaching school here. Took a big pay cut in salary, I can tell you that. But we, we've had a lot of really wonderful times, and we've had our down times, too. Everybody does. Getting married is not going to be all just fun and games and, you know, kitty cats and puppy, puppy dogs. It's, there are some times that you have to learn to give. It's not a... Uh, it's all my way, or it's all your way, it's both ways. You, you do things together. You figure things out together. Keep an open communication. Because the, the, the times that we had, would seem to have problems were when we weren't communicating like we needed to be. So, we found some of those things out the hard way, as we do in life but oh my goodness he is like I told you before he is such a jokester when we first got married he used to play try playing tricks on me all the time I finally got wise to him um, I remember one night I was taking a bath and I had my washcloth on the side of the tub and I was washing my face and I was grabbing for my washcloth to, to wipe my face off and when I put my hand in there down, I couldn't find my washcloth and I felt something uh, I, something really weird feeling. Well in the meantime while my eyes have been closed my husband came in the bathroom and he got some of his shaving cream and he sprayed it he picked up my washcloth and sprayed some shaving cream there in place. <laughs> that was so nice. So I'm feeling around for my washcloth to wipe my face off. And I get this handful of shaving cream. And I'm going, Jerry, where are you? <laughs> he was laughing. He thought that was hilarious, of course. I'm sure if I had done it to him, I would have thought it fun was, so, was funny. But, um, yeah, he, I said, well, you're cleaning that mess up wasn't hard to do of course um, another thing he did I um, hate any kind of roach I hate roaches they're just disgusting creatures and um, he one time we had my toothbrush you know had that in in its in our toothbrush holder and I pulled my toothbrush out, and this thing came jumping out at me. And I'm screaming, because I know it's a roach. So, he's standing back to the back, laughing. What he had done was gotten a little piece of a garbage sack, and got a piece of string, and tied it to the end of my toothbrush and stuck it down in there. So when I pulled it out, this came flying up at me in my face, of course. Yeah, I, I was not amused. He was quite amused. Not me. So I was not very happy with him there for a while because I, like I said, I am terrified of things like that. The, the, <laughs> it still gives me the creeps today. Um, another, another, uh, time, we were laying in bed, and this was before we had Catherine, we were just me and him, and the bedroom door was open, and it started moving. I couldn't imagine what was going on. It was really, it, it was just freaky. So I'd see the door moving just a little bit. Then I thought, I'm really seeing things. Then it moved just a little bit more. And I could not imagine what was going on. And I'm like, what? what's wrong with the door? And he just started laughing. He couldn't even keep a straight face, but he started laughing. He'd gotten some thread, tied it around the doorknob, and um, 
was pulling it on it while we were in the bed. Yeah. Anything that he could think of, he would do. But, yeah, he, he enjoyed, he enjoyed irritating the crap out of me. <laughs> he really did. But I soon learned about his little tricks, and it became much harder for him to trick me. I got to where uh, he would tell me something. For example, I might have sent him to the store to get something for me. And he comes back, just straight face, and he said, um, well, I got, and he mentioned something that was totally different than what I had told him to send him to the store for. He said, well, I got you the, the oranges that you wanted, or whatever it might have been, and I might have asked him for toilet paper. And here I am, I didn't want oranges, and we need toilet paper. Well, I thought you said oranges. Then he starts, because he, he could carry on pretty good for a while. Then he starts laughing. I got the toilet paper or whatever it was. Yeah, he, it didn't take too many times of that before I caught on to, okay, where is it? I know you got it because if you hadn't, you wouldn't be smiling over there, would you? Because you'd know I was mad. <laughs> so, uh, then I learned to play some of those tricks on him. I can do, do him that way today. I can tell him something and he he'll believe something that I've told him. For example, um, he'll tell me to maybe take his check to the bank. And he'll, when he, when I talk to him, he said, well, did you get my check taken? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot. And he's on the other end. What? I told you to get that in there. I need to be taken in there today. And I'm like, I got it. You know I did. You know that I'm not going to let you down like that. <laughs> Whatever. So, that's always something, something going on. You might as well have, have some fun together. Don't need to be serious all the time. He likes to, to be funny. He does the same kinds of things at work. Like I told you, he's a mechanic. Well, he's actually a service manager. But when he was a mechanic, he would do things... That were not very nice to the people he worked with. He would get, I don't know, some part that's in the car and it has, um, it shocks you when you touch it. Well, he took it out and laid it on the counter for anybody who might be passing by and just thought they needed to touch something. Yeah, so he just watched them, you know, jump when they touch it. He, he just loves that kind of thing. When we were in college... Okay. Um, uh, I was living in a dorm with my sister, and they allowed guys to come back then. You had to, the guys had to sign in and out and be out of your dorm room at a certain time. Well, he came in there, and he loves, like I said, loves those pranks. So he decided to super glue a quarter in the in the hallway of the dorm. Okay, it opens out into a hall, and all of the doors are going up and down. It was all an all-girl dorm. It, we didn't have, back in those days, it was not co-ed. All girls in the dorm. So, he heard someone out in the hallway. So, he knew that the time had come. So, we are looking under the door, especially him, while he watches this girl try to scrape this quarter up. And she's going, <laughs> you could hear her mumbling and grumbling out there. Uh, a couple of them tried, and they they just gave up. Well, this one girl, she went back. She got um, a knife or something, and she got that sucker off of the ground. <laughs> she, she had a... Um, got that out. Well, he did another thing that was mean, because he can't be that way. He thinks it's funny, though. He got a dime, and he was holding it with some tweezers, and he got... Um, a lighter or something, a match, I don't remember what it was, but he was heating that thing to get it really hot. And then he just kind of threw it underneath the door. I don't know how he, he come up with the craziest things. 
but he threw that out under the door and somebody picked it up and you could hear him holler well they figured out where all of this was coming from so they started spraying shaving cream up underneath our door and oh uh, then um <laughs> it became an all an all free for all we got some crushed ice and we were throwing it at people in the halls. Yeah, it it was fun. College can be so much fun. I remember those days and oh yeah, well you, you had to study and all of that. But there were some fun times. Oh, the crazy things we used to do. But well, we had a good time. Those are just some of the things I can remember right now offhand. Um, well, we've been together, like I said, 41 and a half years. Either dating, engaged, or married. 36 and a half years married. So, it's been a long time and we know each other pretty well. We still get along. We get along for a pretty good oh yeah we do we ever argue well yeah sometimes not as bad I mean usually arguments are over something silly but just may not talk to him for a day or two <laughs> he makes me <laughs> upsets me very much it's best not to even say anything sometimes <laughs> if you're thinking bad thoughts just better keep them inside <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's been a wonderful, it's been a wonderful life. I mean, it's, we still have, hopefully, many more years to come. I cannot believe that the time has gone as fast as it has. Good gracious. It has gone so fast. But, um, as you can tell, I've been married longer than I taught school, but not by much. That's only because I'm retired now. But I had so many fun things happen at school. I've told you a few of those. And there are so many more. <laughs> so many things happen. You know when you're at work, because you spend a lot of time at work, things are going to happen. Some good and some not so good. But I did enjoy teaching. Uh, there were days that I was not too happy. <laughs> it was not the greatest day. Um, because sometimes, you know, some of those kids, I don't know whether you know this or not, sometimes they don't want to do what you ask them to do. Can you imagine that? Yeah, if you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They just... Okay, let's let's get our books out and turn to page 356. Yes, yes. You need to get your book out. 356. You know, after five times later. Are you, is everyone on page 356? <laughs> oh, my goodness. When you have a room full of children, because everyone... We all know everyone learns differently and everyone listens differently. So some of them, they might not have heard it the first two times that I said to get your book out and turn to page 356. So it's, uh, I, I learned to start writing it on the board too. So you would have it on the board where they could also see it. You learn a lot. Gosh, my first year of teaching. Oh, I was in Aldine. That's a a suburb of Houston. I taught a group, a room of 29 third graders, and I started teaching. I graduated in December and started teaching in January. The teacher that was there had to go on a leave of absence. Oh, I found out why. <laughs> um, she had asked for all the problem kids to be put in her room because she felt like she could help them. She just really, I mean, she had a, a good heart. And I believe it must have uh, worn her down 
believe me, this is my first year. It wore me out. And I was young. I mean, she wasn't real old or anything. But I'll tell you what, I got broke in real well my first year of teaching. I had 29 kids. Six of them were had been labeled ADHD, which is hyperactive, which is attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Well, you just have to um, imagine this being your first time and having a room full of students, because that wasn't the only problem. I mean, there were some that were in there with, you know, other problems. Some of those children were on medication. Some of them weren't. And I don't believe in medicating people unless they have to be. I mean, I take medication for my uh, stress and anxiety um, because I have to. But I don't believe in over-medicating anyone. But uh, <laughs> it was quite a handful, let me tell you. It was a handful. And there was, you know, that was a long time ago really long time ago what 37 years 38 I don't remember anyway it was a long time ago and I remember most of the kids in that room you know you remember some more than others but I did love them dearly I wasn't married at the time so I was Miss Barfield I was a Barfield before I got married and the first week I was there the third grade had planned a trip to the Houston Museum of Fine Arts. Oh, joy, joy, I was taking a room full of kids, didn't know their names, didn't know them. But the teacher who left, she very kindly went with us, or I would not have known if I had all the kids or not. I was busily counting the whole time that I was there. Anytime we've ever taken field trips with kids, I'm counting all day long. Two, four, six, eight, <laughs> making sure I had all my kids. I would have just died if I uh, had lost any of them. I'm loving this pen, by the way. It works great. Um, but anyway, that was, uh, yeah, that was real fun. My first week, I get to take the kids on a field trip <laughs> yeah and uh, I didn't know the kids they didn't know me fresh out of school yeah I'm gonna tell you something <laughs> college didn't prepare you for that first <laughs> that for teaching school yeah they may teach you a few things but um, it's a whole nother ball game when you get out there into the real teaching world and if any of you out there are teachers or have been teachers, you know what I'm talking about. I remember some of those professors would make you think that um, those kids were sitting there with bated breath, waiting to hear every word that you had to say. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that little dream went out the window very quickly. So, I was very firm with the students with all of them, not just some of them, every single one. I treated them the same way, and that's the way, that's the way it needs to be. I didn't have favorites. I didn't, if I, if I had anyone that I would consider to be, you know, someone I would help out more, it was my kids who were having trouble, or who came from families that didn't have much. Those kids needed a little extra, and I was ready to give it to them. So, anyway, that um, field trip, thank God we did not lose one student. And they were all present that day. Of course they are. And I, never, I did not miss one day of school because I knew those kids needed me there and that there was no substitute going to be able to take care of those kids um, the way I could. I remember the nurse at that school when she'd see me she said she used to tell me she said honey I don't know how you get up every morning and come to school <laughs> because you know the stress everyone else around me was doing team teaching 
That means there were two teachers in the room, and, and they had more kids in the classroom, and they would, one would teach one subject, one would teach the other. I taught everything, you know, science, history, reading, math, everything to, to the kids, which was no problem. I didn't do that. I did that for several years in third grade. But I had no one helping me. I had no, you know, mentor. Now that I have mentor teachers, which is fantastic, and I have mentored for a couple of years um, since I've been retired. And so I was basically thrown into this lovely group of children that I came to love very dearly. But uh, we had, um, we were to choose a country. Well, my mom was Greek. She's no longer living, so her parents came here from Greece in the early 1900s, and they met over here, actually. So I decided the country I wanted to do was Greece, since I am half Greek, and my mom was going to come and teach them some Greek words. So I was really excited, and I found a Greek, um, kind of a delicatessen, <clears throat> where I was able to purchase some baklava and some of the calamari um, olives and, um, <clears throat> and and some other Greek delicacies. And I will never forget when I told the guys that owned the place that I was half Greek, they were flirting with me. Okay, I was engaged by this time. And I told them, I said, um, I'm engaged. <laughs> they didn't seem to care. <laughs> they asked me to go dancing and stuff. I'm like, uh, no. No, uh, I can't. So that was that was kind of interesting. It was flattering, these Greek fellas. Handsome Greek guys. <laughs> anyway, that's getting off the subject. But I had this plan. We were going to create some of the Greek ruins with clay. And so we did. <laughs> we did do that. And then, for the day of the kind of like you had the, the Greek day or the day for whatever country you were doing and I decided we were going to dress in togas okay so they bring their sheet or whatever and I was helping them put them on I mean we left our clothes on we didn't go on our trial underneath there uh, <laughs> I remember my mom saying I never got a new that how many times the kids I don't know how many times I said Miss Barfield Miss Barfield Miss Barfield Miss Barfield Miss Bar because they were asking for my help to help get their togas on and she said you know that I remained so patient with them and she just she just couldn't believe it that uh, it it was fun and my mom just taught them a few Greek words and the kids were fascinated and that was a long time ago, but, you know, I still remember those things. There's some things you just never forget. And it was a lot of fun. And they loved tasting the, di dif the different Greek foods that I brought. They enjoyed that so much. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I think that, uh, you know... That during that day, I thought I might lose my mind, but I made it. And I was very tired at the end of the day, but it was, it was all worth it, and the kids just loved it. And the other classes were doing their different things, but like I said, I was by myself. Um, but that was okay. I, I learned all by myself, all on my own, and, you know, that's just the way things are. You know, when you start a job, you don't always have someone there holding your hand, showing you every little thing that you're going to need to do. So, that was, yeah, that, my first, first group of kids that I taught, that was, that was amazing. Gosh. Yeah, they're, they're grown now. <laughs> I'd love to see some of them again and see how they turned out. I remember, um one little boy and um, he lived with his dad 
his mom had left them. So I would have to meet with his dad a lot. He he had some problems and he uh <laughs> like one time when he went into the bathroom and he'd all over another kid. Yeah. He would do some things that were not quite things that you should be doing. So, um anyway, we we did get past doing that anymore. But he lived with his dad, and I'll never forget, one day he called me Dad instead of Miss Babcock. Because the kids will sometimes call you Mom, because you're with them so much, and they get to close to you. Well, he called me Dad, and he was so embarrassed. And I said, that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> you can call me that. But he was so embarrassed. But I still remember that. Because, you know, that means they... Are, are getting close to you. That's that's how I felt about it anyway. And you just want to try to make a difference. Um, what else happened that year? There's so many things happened. In all the years that I've taught, there's been some crazy things go on. Um, I just sit long enough and I remember. <laughs> Sometimes I just sit and just start laughing out loud because I'll start remembering something that happened and I guess that is normal um, I may have to one of the teachers I mentored last year has wanted me to come up to see her class this year so I need to go over there and, and visit with her that they're eighth graders because the I also taught junior high and I love those junior high kids also really loved them so they didn't know from one day to the next whether they were going to be a, a child or an adult their hormones are just all over the place boy I remember being that age that was that was hard that was really I thought it was one of the hardest times being 13, 14, 15. You just didn't quite know where you belonged in place. Junior high is kind of a... Um, we had 6th, 7th, and 8th grade in our junior high. And the 6th graders are so much different than the 8th graders. It's just amazing how much they change in two years. Even in one year, from seventh to eighth grade, you'll see a big change and from sixth to seventh. So it's it's amazing. And those of you who have kids and um, at di different ages, you know what it's like. And those of you with brothers and sisters, you, you've seen what they've gone through. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a hard age, but I loved those kids. I really did. They could get understand my <laughs> silly sense of humor because I I do have kind of a quirky sense of humor. Sometimes you might hear it come out in me. Usually it's when I'm around a lot of people. It, it can, <laughs> I don't have to have a drink at all to get really silly. And yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I miss being with a you know those group of kids. You hear me say things like that every so often. If it wasn't for you know the testing and the administrators just being on your butt about things that don't really matter, what matters are those kids? For goodness sakes, let's have some fun teaching school. Let's don't make it where you know people feel like they're a failure all the time or let me get off of my soapbox there anyway I've got a little bit more done on here I'm gonna try to sit and do more on this I have been working on crocheting a shawl that I want to give to someone um, probably donate it or give it as a prayer shawl or something um, some of the ladies at my church we just 
I got just started doing this with them this year. They meet on the first Friday of the month. I'm not sure if they're meeting tomorrow or not. Tomorrow's the first of February. I can't believe it. Um, and we get together and either you can crochet, knit, whatever, and um, we're just making things that we want to donate, either the hospitals or the nursing home or just wherever we can find a place that is in need. If you have any places that are around you and you do any kind of craft, I mean, just think, even if you do diamond paint, just think if you, because I've thought about this, if you did a diamond painting and donated it to uh, a nursing home or something, and they might could hang it in someone's room or in the hallway, and they'd have something pretty to look at. Those are some things that I have been thinking about. Besides just having the diamond paintings, you know, and giving to friends and things, you could give them to someone that doesn't have anything or um, doesn't have some of these pretty things that they could look at. You could find out things that they like, whether it's uh, animals or a, well, to me, any dining, diamond painting just looks gorgeous. But I thought about that. I was like, you know, I should do one. Because I have donated to nursing homes. That's where I donate a lot. Because we have actually three nursing homes in our small town. A lot of retired people come here. And wouldn't that be a nice gift? Or even to a school or, or whatever. You, you can donate to different places. And they would have something really pretty to hang up. Because diamond painting is not like just giving a regular painting out. And people could look at it and enjoy it. And I would definitely want to put it underneath, uh, if, maybe not glass, but that plexiglass so that if it fell, it didn't break. No one could bro get, bro get broken, <laughs> get cut by glass. So those are just some things that rattle, run, rattle around in my head sometimes. I sometimes just sit there and things just start rattling around in there, come from nowhere. I'm not even sure how long I've been talking at this point. I don't have my phone in here, and it's not, oh, well, it's 421, and I don't even know when I started, so it wouldn't matter if I had a clock in here or not. I'm looking up on my laptop so I can see it, but I am going to let you go so that you can listen to, I, I hope you listen to me. I love hearing from you. I love hearing your comments. Um, if you have anything that you want to hear or know more about me, put it down below. I had someone ask about my, um, you know, engagement, wedding, honeymoon. If you want to know something about me, and don't, don't be afraid to ask. You know, if it's too personal, that might not get put down. <laughs> might not might not talk about it too much but I can't imagine anything being too personal well I could but let's not go there anyway I am going to go for now I'll let you go I hope you're having a blessed day you take care and love you guys bye